Hello, and welcome back to Pleasant View. Time has come to go back to the elementary school and meet all the children again. And we're going to follow along on Jocasta Goth's day today. So let's start this out at Goth Manor. We're at the house and everyone is still asleep. It's very early in the morning. And uh, things have changed around a little bit since we were here last. There are two people missing from the household. One of them is Jocasta's mother, Bella, who is uh, admitted to the hospital right now because of her strange uh, illness that has been investigated. And also upstairs we have this room sitting empty since um, Cassandra and Darren's youngest son, Hector, is uh, now living with his brother, Dirk. So we still have Hecuba here though resting in her room and it is actually her last day before she turns into a young adult. So we'll have to see if she stays around as well or not. Besides that we still have Alexander living here of course and Darren and Cassandra in their bedroom. And then of course we also have Jocasta sleeping here in her little bedroom very cramped one <laughs> compared to the others and um, she has this uh, wand that she got i think it was last time i played that she wants to get to know her father don who she has never met she's only seen a picture of him by chance at nina's dance studio she's heard a lot of tales about him of course and um, she desperately wants to get to know him at this point. And uh, she has a lot of different kinds of fantasies about him. Uh, I'm pretty sure that she is uh, imagining uh, him coming and rescuing her <laughs> from this place in her most private thoughts. Um, I think that what with her being so terrorized by Cassandra, she has a pretty low opinion of herself. And um, what with the fact that she believes that Don is some kind of monster, she probably thinks that they are very similar and um, that she can find some kind of kinship with him. So we are moving closer to 7 a.m. and uh, the time when people should start to wake up. Of course, Darren doesn't have a job, really, so he doesn't have to get up early. Cassandra has this really, really strange want to have a child, which <laughs> is just so wrong for so many reasons. Um, and of course, she is going to leave for work pretty much now. So she needs to get up out of bed. And uh, Alexander is uh, having the day off actually today, as many of the um, people at the science facility does. And he still has thoughts about... Brittany, um, their relationship is a bit on the rocks though, so not sure what will happen with that. So Jocasta actually woke up on her own and she's going to take time to make her bed, not to uh, make Cassandra attack her first thing in the morning. She has been really testy lately, um, what with Bella being hospitalized, that has put a lot of stress on Cassandra. And she has been uh, more harsh on Jocasta than normal. So I'm just going to send Jocasta to the bathroom to freshen up. We have Cassandra leaving for work here and apparently Darren woke up as well. I think he might be heading to the same bathroom. So I'm going to send him to this one instead. And Hecuba, you can also wake up actually. can actually see if there is uh, some kind of um, breakfast available here for your casta. Okay, there are no leftovers apparently, so I guess she can grab a can of juice. Yeah, and Alexander is sleeping in. It's completely fine since he has the day off. And Darren is apparently still very angry with Dismas <laughs> because he wants to see his ghost, which is pretty extreme. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of things going on, of course, with the Lothario family and this family in general. And 
what with uh, Hecuba breaking things off finally with Ismus, I think Darren is pretty relieved not to have to <laughs> worry about those kinds of things anymore. For now, at least. It looks like there are some dishes and stuff for the maid to take care of later. And we still also have the pet stuff left after Nemesis passed away. Some cat toys and beds over here as well. But that was um, Cassandra's, no sorry, Bella's cat. So what with her not even being here anymore, I'm not sure if they would want to get another pet or not. I don't feel like Darren is much of a cat person and neither is Cassandra. I think Cassandra would be more than Darren probably, but <laughs> yeah. Maybe Hecuba would like a cat. Mm, we'll have to see. So Jocasta is leaving for school. And we will meet her up at the lot. But before we move along, let's drop into this household as well and take a look at what's going on. So similarly to in Goth Manor, there are some people missing here. Previously we had Dismas and Daphne living at home. But they have uh, only just mo moved out, aged into young adults and starting college. So Nero took over this room. And recently Hazel used to live in here, but she has actually also moved out, <laughs> moved back in with her mother. So the house is far more empty than it used to be. And uh, I believe that Don is really feeling... The loss of uh, a lot of people around him right now, not only because uh, his children have um, left him behind all except Nero, uh, but also because he has um, had a fight with Malcolm. So that relationship isn't really in a good place right now. And... Um, He's also broken things off with Ivy recently, who is going to get married very soon to someone else. So that's also a long-term relationship that he has had to let go very recently. And um, besides that, of course, uh, Bella is hospitalized and he is one of the people in charge of taking care of her. And that is also putting a lot of stress on him, I think, uh, he is really worried about her and being in such close proximity to her as well uh, while this is going on is also pretty strenuous. So um, I think that Don is pretty snappy. He is um, clinging on to the few people he has left right now. Um, I think that he is spending a lot of time with Nina and Nero uh, being pretty irritable <laughs> and not the nicest person to be around right now while he's trying to work through stuff, basically. So he is going to head off to work pretty soon as well. And Nina has the day off today, actually, so she's gonna stay home. And of course, Nero is heading out to school and then... Um, yeah, actually, he's gonna be home from uh, work today. So he's working as a gas station attendant right now. So I actually think I'm going to kick Don out of bed because uh, it has turned into winter. I realized that I forgot to set it to winter at the golf house. So I'm going to have to do that later. Um, but it's supposed to be the first day of winter. And well, Don is parading around in a t-shirt. So <laughs> I feel like I should try to find something a little bit warmer for him to wear. At least Nina has been wearing this uh, turtleneck sweater for a long time. So she, she has, doesn't have the same problem. Um, but yeah, let's check what Don actually already have in his wardrobe. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, another t-shirt. I think this comes from uh, an athletic outfit. And this one uh, is actually his son's clothes. And this one is um, one that I started out having him in, I think. I don't think it suits him right now so 
I actually don't think he has something that I would like him to change into. I think I prefer to have him uh, on do some online shopping for something new then. So I'm going to send him to the computer, shop online and buy clothing every day. And then he can use the bathroom downstairs. Uh, Nina is taking care of the bed apparently, being the neat freak that she is. I think Nero is sleeping in. Didn't do his homework yesterday apparently, so that's left to do. He's pretty hungry as well, so... And Nina is too. Maybe Nina is gonna head down and make some breakfast for them then. And Don has this really amusing uh, want to fall in love with Jennifer. <laughs> but yeah, the relationship isn't really like that. I think maybe that's like thoughts he's having right now out of desperation and rebellion <laughs> or something. Uh, but they have been close friends since they were teenagers. And um, they've been working very closely together as well uh, for many, many years. So yeah, I think that it's not really a serious want that he has. He just doesn't look at her like that, I think. Maybe he does in some ways, but uh, yeah. All right, so let's figure this out. The first idea I had was something like this, a pretty athletic outfit for him still. Let's buy that for him anyway, because I think that's going to suit him. But let's check if there's something else as well. Yeah, something like that could work as well. Let's go with that one. Let's just pick out some clothes for him. He needs to have more clothes, I think, anyway. So I can't really see him in one of these sweaters, though. Yeah, no, I think that's fine, actually. So let's grab those shirts. And uh, yeah, you can just um, do a gussy up here. Plan outfit every day. Oh yeah, Nina actually had a cold, but apparently now she's healthy again, so that's good. Yeah, I think that works the best, uh, matching with his age as well, because he's uh, pretty close to aging into an elder, actually. Yeah, I've had him in this uh, sort of joggers <laughs> for a very long time, but I think this work as well, so let's go with that. And he can freshen up. Oh, this is clogged. Fantastic. Um, similarly, Nero actually also is just wearing a t-shirt. So I think I'm going to see if he has something else to change into as well. This used to be his brother's. I think there's someone else in the hood wearing this exact shirt. No, I think I'm going to see if I can find... I'm going to use Gassy up for him uh, to buy something for us every day. I just need to double check because I don't remember what um, Nero's hobby is. Um, is he as athletic as his parents? I think he is, right? Yeah, his hobby is fitness. So this makes sense. I'm going to give him that shirt. That makes sense. All right. For some reason, Nina has interrupted everything. <laughs> Maybe she like coughed or something <laughs> okie dokie um, well I'm gonna send her down to serve up breakfast anyway then and you can make your bed and you can go ahead and uh, take care of this bed as well <laughs> yeah he's as sloppy as his father right yeah he did not like that <laughs> Go down here. Breakfast is soon ready. It's a, a very humble group at the breakfast table. But it looks like Don is in an okay mood right now. He's not arguing with anyone. <laughs> Listening attentively. I think that there's a lot of... Um, pressure on Nero right now as the sort of the only kid in the household. He gets all the attention all of a sudden from uh, his parents. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure he's uh, used to sort of slipping in between um, 
like minding his own business most of the time and um yeah be getting away with stuff a lot more um but yeah the spotlight is gonna be on him on him right now uh rather than uh, say his older brother <laughs> All right, so Don actually has to abandon the sandwich and uh, head out to work. And uh, yeah, Nero is also leaving for school. So we have Andrea arriving here at uh, the school. For some reason in this outfit, even though she didn't leave in that outfit. I don't know why that keeps happening. Uh, but I guess I'll just ask her to change into her every day. She does have a job outfit stoppinator. For some reason that's happening anyway. <laughs> um, right. So let's start by going ahead and summoning everyone in as normal. So we're going to have both the other teacher and the other uh, children. So I'm just going to show you my spreadsheet. This is what we're working with. So we have Andrea, who's the owner, and Elizabeth Monif, who is the other teacher for the younger children. And Brandy is going to have to join us later um, as the cafeteria worker. And then we have all of these children, except for Tomwe, who is technically not a child yet. So I'm just going to skip by him instead. So yeah, I'm going to start by just summoning everyone in. Okay, great. So uh, all of them are summoned in here now. And we have some kids who have not been at the elementary school yet. Uh, this is uh, Simone's first day. Also Jacob's first day and Adam's first day. But Vanessa has been here once before. So these three kids are uh, new. So they should uh, greet their um, peers and their teachers as well. So, yeah, I'm gonna start with just having them meet each other here. Let's focus in on Adam first. Then, Jacob, you can greet Simone. Right, they actually already know each other, so I don't have to do that. Looks like Mary's coming over on her own to introduce herself. Okay, Jacob knows Irina. And also both of the Stratton twins. Um, he does also know Cecily. But not Kian. So he can meet him. And Simone. Does not know. Jo, she does know Irina. Okay. okay. Uh, but not Mary. And Adam. Also does not know Kian. Can meet Jocasta. And yeah, also uh, Adam and Simone. Oh, Andrea is greeting her daughter. <laughs> That's adorable. And looks like uh, <laughs> Erin is showing off in here with Vanessa. <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, but yeah. She hasn't met uh, Aileen actually, and they are uh, related even, so it's about time that they met each other. Uh, but she hasn't met Vanessa. Yeah, you need to meet Irene. Oh, and we have <laughs> the reviewer arriving, so I'm going to ban her specifically. I'm going to go to the visitor controller, specific sim, and Carol. She does not need to be here. So I think that most of the kids are starting to know each other now. Maybe Aerie needs to meet a few more people here. He does not know her. And I think she's missing one at least. I think it's Jocasta actually. Yeah. Let's see. There she is. He's also missing someone. It's also Aileen, so you can just walk here for now. Oh wait, you're missing two people. You're also... You don't know Irene. Just meet her as well. 
Nee, das sind Hers und Matt Mary. Ähm. Um, so let's do that. She's also missing someone. Yeah, I think it's Kian, actually. Where he he's here. Let's greet him. And Adam should also be missing someone then. I think it might be Erin. Yeah. So let's have you go and greet her. And actually I think that um it's possible that they don't know all the children either. Not Adam. Yeah, not Adam, not Jacob. And also not Simone. Okay. And how about you? Okay, she just needs to meet Adam and Jacob, apparently. And I think the kids can start to head upstairs to the classroom. Just to take a few at a time so they don't get messed up in the staircase here. Okay, did you... No, you still need to meet Jacob. Yes, good. Now she has met everyone, I think. So Andrea can also head upstairs. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep Anessa, Adam, Jacob and Simone downstairs because they are the youngest ones. Uh, so yeah, let's just have them uh, play with blocks, I guess, to start out. So they can get to know one another. She's chatting with um, Elizabeth apparently, so he can continue with that. Play with blocks, and then yeah, she just had to sit here for now. Okay, the routing got messed up here. Um, she's supposed to sit here. Right, and you can activate the epic. This is the opportunity pack, and um, she's gonna tell a story. So the kids can listen in on the story and get the lesson. Then I'm gonna have to uh, ask them to listen to the story. I'm talking about learning their toddler skills apparently <laughs> over here. Great. So they're listening in on the lesson here. And we can uh, focus in on them downstairs. Looks like these kids are also chatting about learning their toddler skills. <laughs> so yeah, Elizabeth is just sitting supervising for now, letting them play. Since they are occupying themselves with this, uh, I guess she can just as well sit down to study cleaning. Why not? And it's past nine as well, so I can go ahead and summon in uh, Brandy. There she is. And yeah, let's change her outfit with Tom's clothing tester up here. It's going to be culinary level six. Great. Oh yeah, and I remodeled this last time, I think. Yeah. Actually, how many? I think it was 14 kids this time. Yeah, 14. How many chairs do I have? 18, so it's fine. Don't need to do anything. I wonder maybe if I ask her to serve breakfast. Uh, let's go with pancakes, I guess. Let's make it a pancake Thursday. <laughs> and uh, if I lock this door. Oh, Brandy has the key. Yeah, because I was wondering if I could have her like put the serving plates on here. If I uh, locked her in. <laughs> Um, but maybe it doesn't really matter. She can have, yeah, maybe it's better if she even gives her more work to put the plates out. Uh, right, what setting do I have on this? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I should actually do to check on that before I, okay, too late. Let's just resume cooking and see how many... Serving studies. So toddlers actually gain a relationship really, really quickly with the activity table. Like 
insanely quickly. Uh, but apparently the same thing doesn't happen for children. So that's uh, a nice balance, I think. Okay, she's spacing them out, apparently. Oh, now it worked. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's certainly more than six servings anyway. Uh, I think it's actually enough servings to like serve everyone plus the teachers. <laughs> yeah, every single... No, two spots here are gonna be left. Where are you going now? I think maybe she's going up here. Uh, yeah, she has a key. I think I'm gonna remove the key for her so she can't go in there. Just gonna head upstairs and complain that she can't access it and hopefully walk downstairs again. Oh, no, too late. <laughs> oh, well. It's just, um, oh, I think I have to wait. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's bring this one downstairs and then this one can go like here instead. Yeah, nice. Hitting the M key on your keyboard, you can um, put stuff down in different slots. So that's how I moved the plate on the table there. Right, so that is all done. So I'm gonna... Oh yeah, I think she's locked in now. <laughs> Just gonna put her outside then. And yeah, ask her to go clean that up. She can clean this as well. Keep things tidy in here. And I think I can go ahead and end the lesson. Need to quickly deactivate the epic. And yeah, why not just send everyone downstairs to eat then since we have <laughs> enough food. But let's start with the children so I make sure that everyone gets to eat. And again, I'm going to take a few at a time so the staircase doesn't get clogged. Oh, she's already heading downstairs, apparently. I think a few of them are already, already doing it autonomously, so... Um, gonna wait a little bit. Okay, yeah, Andrea is also sitting down here. Brandy, you can go ahead and um, sit here, maybe. You can put the book away and let's uh, ask the kids to stop playing with the blocks as well. And you can also go ahead and uh, eat. Okay, maybe I need to move this table because this doesn't seem to be working very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> she decided to sit down there instead, so maybe I can move this plate over here instead. Oh, he's done, apparently. So I'm just gonna let him, leave him to his own devices. Yeah, he can't walk past that. Yeah, okay, there are some issues here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that <laughs> maybe I'll have to try to um, remodel this anyway. Maybe I can make this table longer somehow and get more seatings. I don't know. The way it looks now anyway, it's not really working. Uh, is that your plate? Why don't you eat that? Uh, he has not eaten either. You don't have to clean up. That's actually Brandy's job. Yeah. The kids are trying to play cops and robbers and uh, they really dislike it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're losing stars here. All right. Well, Andrea, you can head upstairs and um, work a little bit on your stuff. Why don't you um, work at home and work on your charisma? Elizabeth. Oh, <laughs> She apparently didn't get to eat anything, so I think I'm just gonna send her upstairs. And apparently she's been reading sci-fi, so I'm gonna take care of her hygiene. She can have some TV dinner then. Apparently I had one plate.
plate to view. That's fine. You don't have to clean up. Uh, let's just try to send the kids outside. See if that helps. Lots of helpful children wanting to do Brandy's job for her. <laughs> That's not necessary. No, and apparently Rina and Luke became best friends. That's cute. Yeah, Brandy do that. And yeah, they are sitting down here, but uh, I'm going to send them outside anyway. Okay, and Jacob can also go outside. So it looks like Jocasta is um, sort of hanging out with the other kids right now, but she hasn't found one playmate really so far. She's not sticking to herself, but she doesn't seem to be confidently approaching anyone either. Looks like she's looking at um, Aiden now, though. But uh, Aiden is uh, occupied with other stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, a lot of the kids are occupying themselves with each other and Jocasta is sort of left out. She met Lydia now, though. Okay, Randy, you're almost done. Yeah, the toilets are fine, except this one. So you can go ahead and take care of that one. Something has glitched out with this one, but let's not mind that. <laughs> and this... Guys are sitting inside apparently playing, so they don't like each other though, which is interesting. <laughs> All right. They are keeping interrupting what they're doing. Okay. Why don't you also go outside? And Elizabeth, are you done now? Yes, she's done with lunch, so I'm going to have her head outside as well to look after the kids while Andrea's uh, working here. And uh, okay, she <laughs> she just left that one behind. Uh, I guess Andrea can take care of that one later. Since I locked Brandy out, so. Well, Brandy has taken care of the entire kitchen things here. And she has cleaned up that. So I'm gonna just make her uh, unselectable and that's gonna teleport her away since I've banned all ages on this lot with this Vista controller. And let's take a look outside here. Yeah, okay, it looks like Jocasta has found a playmate here now. Uh, and they're actually getting along well enough to play cops and robbers. So <laughs> that's good. So far, it seems like she's getting along the best with uh, Lydia and also um, with uh, Simone. Andrea is done with her work. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have her just clean that up and then also walk outside. Okay, looks like uh, Jocasta is trying to approach Irene here, but she <laughs> blanked her. So she, she just is playing with Lydia. Irene is too occupied with Kian. They are neighbors and best friends and very close in age. Or oh, well, he was actually a bit older than I thought. <laughs> He's gonna age up today actually, so going to have another teenager soon. Okay, so Jocasta is uh, talking to, to um, Adam now. <laughs> Elizabeth is apparently hanging out with uh, Jacob. Now, some kids um, are like that, that they uh, tend to be drawn to talking and interacting a lot with the teachers. Okay, so it's uh, 3 p.m. and um, the kids are uh, done for the day at the school and they're heading back home.
So Cassandra is back home and well, she's fuming. <laughs> um, she has lost control of Jocasta, who has been sort of like her chess piece that she can use against, or well, to take out revenge on Don, that is, for um, yeah, ever since she was born, really. And now that has gone. Um, she has sort of told herself that uh, she hates having to take care of her, but she has also raised her uh, and has um, taken a lot of pride in um, molding her into the way that she wants. So she has sort of also become part of um, Cassandra's identity a little bit. And losing that makes her feel wrong-footed and... Uh, is just another thing that she has lost now. So this um, has really built onto her uh, feelings of being powerless and um, seeing things run through her hands. And um, well, similarly to how Dawn is feeling right now, actually, um, I think that she is um, very close to the breaking point and um, very likely to snap <laughs> at the people around her. So it's 5 p.m., a little bit after, and um, she's just going to head inside. Alexander uh, has um, spent part of the day catching up with friends since he hasn't been uh, working any. And he has also been working out a little bit on a new treadmill up here. This room wasn't really being used for anything, and uh, I think that uh, that's something that he would like to do 
And Darren has, of course, been painting <laughs> today as normal, but he has also been catching up a little bit um, with his uh, friend, Grayson Bendett. And, your, and Hikiba uh, has been up in her room, actually also calling up um, Dirk and catching up a bit with him. But now it's soon time for her to age up into a young adult, actually. So I think that um, they're not going to throw a party or anything. Um, that's not what this is going to be about. It's more about family. And uh, well, since Dirk hasn't really been in the picture much um, in before this, um, he's not going to be invited really. But um, yeah, I can definitely see Cassandra wanting Hector to come over for dinner at least. So... I think she's going to go ahead and call him, ask him over. Yep, he'll be over soon. Good. So I think Cassandra can go ahead and cook dinner. Oh, apparently she has some fish in her inventory. Okay. I mean, who is the best at cooking here? She only has three points. Darren has four. Okay, and Alexander also has three. So actually, maybe Darren should serve dinner. Or maybe they have those fish in the fridge. <laughs> because he can also cook those dishes. Yeah, go ahead and make some fast with squash then. And Cassandra can uh, wait for Hector to arrive. You can ask uh, Hekeba to come downstairs. Yeah, and Alexander is uh, catching up with Lucy right now, but he's also um, become friends again with Marsha. And uh, apparently Cassandra is searing in on uh, Hecuba, <laughs> the first thing she does. Uh, but here is Hector as well. Let's have Hecuba greet her brother. Oh, okay. And he's going to shyly admire her, the first uh, thing he does. I guess he's... Uh, Telling her happy birthday. <laughs> Let's have them walk inside. And dinner is served. So I think that um, they're probably going to go ahead and eat first. And then she's going to age up. And it's only one day away for Cassandra as well. Before she ages up. It's probably a little bit... Weird for Hector to be back here in the house uh, as if nothing happened. And uh, well, of course, the topic of um, Jocasta comes up as well, where she is. And uh, Cassandra has to very, <laughs> very um, angrily report what has happened and where she is. Um, and uh, I think people... These guys know better than to ask too many questions, but uh, yeah, I think Darren is a bit outraged at um, where she has gone. And um, that's probably something that he's going to bring up in private with Cassandra later. Alexander, for his part, has a pretty good opinion uh, in comparison to the others uh, of Don and Nina, really. Um, is getting closer and closer with Jennifer after all and Jennifer is um, very friendly with Don and uh, he's also one of the people who is taking the most care of Alexander's mother so um, yeah I feel like uh, he, he doesn't really have the same grudge at least not in the same way as the others do oh apparently uh, oh Cassandra became fit from eating that do they gain fitness from eating fish no no they don't because <laughs> alexander became overweight again and he didn't and he wasn't um just a moment ago that's uh, that's weird okay hmm <laughs> all right maybe cassandra has some sort of <laughs> some um Awesome jeans or something. Right, they have bills. Uh, and I think actually that they have to pay them pretty 
urgently because um pretty sure I got the warning in the morning that um the repo man is on this way otherwise. Uh let's see here if I can pay them now before they arrive. <laughs> They're watching a movie in here. So far your cast um Hikiba hasn't aged up. You know, it's possible since it's a mod that um, it won't trigger on its own. I think it has in the past, but maybe it's a bit random. Uh, I can bring out the um, special birthday cake for young adults. Here it is. Squinge's famous young adult birthday cake. Then I know at least that she's gonna be able to age up. So let's start by putting the leftovers away and then she can age into a young adult. Great and Darren has paid the bills but he's <laughs> very tired all of a sudden so I guess uh, maybe serve some espresso. And let's have Hecuba age into an adult or young adult that is. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> the first thing that happens is that she uh, wants to join the medicine career. That's very interesting as a first want to pop up like this. Uh, right now she has uh, this lifetime wish from when she was a um, teenager to work in media, but I don't really think that that suits her. Um, her hobby is tinkering. If she would want to work in a medicine career, that would make things a little bit different than what I had thought, but uh, not in a bad way. Um, taking a look here at my uh, spreadsheet again for uh, this sort of the uni that I have uh, for Pleasant View. The rule that I use is that if they are want to go into one of the... Um, these careers they're gonna have to actually have a specific major and then also work on the side of that so if they want to become a teacher they want they need to also work as a substitute teacher during their college years if they want to become a scientist they have to work as a lab assistant if they want to uh, work in medicine, they have to be a paramedic. And if they want to join the police force, they have to be a cadet. So that would mean that if, I mean, it seems that she wants to, since she rolled the want, the first thing that happened, um, she would need to be a paramedic. And she would have to study either biology or physics, which is interesting. So I think I'm going to set that up for her since, specifically since she rolled this want. Well, taking a look at her uh, appearance. I think that she um, looks a lot like her father, actually. She's really pretty. So I actually think that the way that she looks now doesn't really have to change. But uh, of course, I want to give her some new clothes. So I'm going to go ahead and use Gassia and buy clothes for her. For some reason, uh, this uh, sort of dress shirt popped out at me the first thing that happened when I opened this up. For some reason, I feel like this could really suit her. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna go with that just because, uh, yeah, I got that feeling as soon as I saw it. But what kind of pants should she have? This won't work. I think that this one's is gonna work the best. So let's go with those for now. Yeah, that works. Yeah, let's go with that. There's a lot of formal wear here. Yeah, this is um, her mother's wedding dress. Yeah, I think that this coat is going to work well for her when it comes to outerwear. 
Mm, don't think I'm gonna go with the same pants though. Yeah, let's grab this instead. Nice. You can change back into your everyday. Awesome. Okay then. Well, <laughs> I think I'm gonna commit to the new plan. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add her here. Nice. That means that she's gonna be in the um, medicine career here as well. Paramedic. And of course, the description is um, you're attending medical school and working part time as a paramedic. So that uh, that makes sense, I think. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to family the family tab, and I'm gonna take a look at Gop Hecuba. She's not a teen anymore. She's a young adult. And yes, she's going to be in the medicine career, paramedic. And I'm going to put her in. I think physics makes more sense than biology for her. So I'm going to, yeah, use physics. And that is actually the same that her mother had. So let's start by just having her call. Or is it college? Yeah. No. <laughs> hmm. Maybe she can't uh, use the cell phone to call and choose a major. Can she use the normal phone? No, I don't remember how it is. I'm going to try with the computer instead. College. Yeah, here you, she can do it. So she's going to declare a major and then I'm going to employ her in the medicine career. There we go. Yeah, the focus skills, uh, one of them is mechanical. So I think that that makes sense with her hobby as well. And then I'm just going to use Monique's computer to choose a job for her. Yeah, she's going to take the job. And then I'm going to have to change the um, level. Yeah, we have the newspaper here. I can use that. Set job level to level two. Uh, okay, <laughs> apparently she has a full um, performance meter. Sometimes that happened um, when I play them in the home world. I don't know. It's some sort of glitch. Yeah, so the only way that I can uh, actually check up on her job level is to get this book. The, let me check my schedule book. So I'm just gonna add that temporarily just to check so that everything worked. Oh yeah, I have to have it paused, not be on that, or well I can be on the screen first, show my job panel, switch back and then I have it. So um, She's going to work 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So it's a very late shift, actually. And she's going to need the job stoppinator as well. So that she doesn't get promoted. And yeah, I can go ahead and delete this. So I think that um, the discussion of what is going to happen when Hecuba... Um, moves to college uh, has been on and off for years really and um, what with the sacrifices that she has done for her family with the breaking up with Dismas and everything and uh, sort of feeling betrayed <laughs> by her mother for the decision that was made and her father as well she has uh, had in her mind that she's going to move out at this point so I think that she's going to go downstairs and um, yeah, talk to her mother about this. Darren has gone to sleep, sleep. apparently this uh, <laughs> day took a toll on him for some reason. <laughs> right, so they're chatting about this and uh, well, Cassandra, um, what with everything that has happened and the strain that she's under, she's not understanding in the least. Um, she does not understand why Hecuba would want to leave. I mean, the college is in the same town. 
she doesn't have to, you know, commute for a very long time living at home and she can live here for free. Why would she want to move somewhere else? She wants to sink her claws into her daughter and keep her very, very close because she's sort of the only thing that Cassandra has left now when it comes to people she can control or around her. Alexander has sort of grown out of her grip and uh, he's doing his own thing with the science facility and everything. And she has lost track of Hector. She has lost track of uh, Jocasta and her mother isn't even around and relying on her anymore. So if uh, Hecuba thinks that she's going to move out, she has another thing coming really. So she's going to switch this around and uh, enforce her way really. And well, Hecuba isn't very happy with that either. So she <laughs> fights back. She has a hot temper as well. She's not um, wanting to take this lying down. But uh, well, what her mother's saying goes really. <laughs> so in conclusion, she's going to be stuck here still in this um, house as she works and as she studies for now at least. And she's going to have to sort of make peace with that for now. Because Cassandra is not going <laughs> to relinquish her hold uh, on her daughter. Let's wake Darren up. He has had a little nap up here. So, yeah, I think he's just going to head downstairs and uh, sit down with his family as well. Uh, I don't think that, Alexander, you would like to play the piano, really. Why don't you head upstairs and work out a bit more, then? Right, and also, since she's going to stay in this household, I also uh, need to put in a um, semester tester. But I'm not going to do it until tomorrow, really, because if I would have moved her into her own house she would have moved in around eight uh, in the morning and that's sort of where she's gonna sync up with everyone else so I'm not gonna get that for her yet so she's gonna be frozen um, in time <laughs> you could say until I start the semester for her with a semester tester so it looks like Darren wants to comfort Cassandra a little bit but with everything that's happened they're sticking together. And uh, Hector is more seeking out his sister, looks like, than uh, anyone else. <laughs> he doesn't like seeing his parents in that position. <laughs> yeah, so I think that um, Hecuba is just going to say goodbye to Hector. He needs to head home, well, to Dirk, that is. And, well... Ekeba doesn't really have much else to do uh, than head back up to her room and uh, sulk. So I think that she just heads upstairs and um, contemplates her situation really. Makes peace with this for now. And while being alone, Darren can finally breach the subject of Jocasta and uh, what's been going on. And um, sharing his worries with Cassandra. But uh, I think at this point, Cassandra is very short when it comes to that subject. Um, doesn't really want to talk about it. Wants to sort of stew in her anger. Yeah, Darren is really tired. <laughs> both of them are, actually. It looks like both of them are going to sit down and nap. So I think I'm just going to send them up to bed. Uh, it's been a long day for both of them, apparently. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to end the day for this family here. And um, yeah, as these two get to bed, let's move back over to the Lothario and Caliente household. So we're back with Jocasta. And um, well, <laughs> she has had her little adventure and she got her wish. She got to meet her father and she understands things a little bit more now. She understands that he's actually not 
a monster after all. And also following Cassandra's abrupt departure, she's finding herself in completely new territory that she doesn't really know what to make of. And what with her history, I think that she is feeling very shy and timid and not sure what to do with herself. Of course, um, Nina being here helps a little bit since they already know each other and um, Jocasta sort of trusts her. But uh, still... She has sort of been dropped off here out of nowhere, even though she went here on her own volition. Um, I don't think that she believed that this was what was going to happen <laughs> when she followed her father out of curiosity. But of course, I think that part of her is also relieved not to have to go back to the goth manor, especially now that her mother isn't even there think that uh, she hasn't really felt at home with her gone either and yeah she doesn't really have somewhere yet that she can think of as as home I think uh, so I think that she's gonna be very timid and sort of careful with what she's doing to start out and of course Don is um, awkward <laughs> around children as always but uh I think that after everything that he's learned now and sort of the decision he has taken to actually do something about the situation, he's more inclined to actually try to get to know his daughter a bit. So Nina has been working out a little bit here and um, I am going to send her... Oh, Don disappeared. <laughs> Where did he go? Oh, he's out here. Um, oh, he's back again, teleporting all over the place. Uh, but she's sort of instructing him to go look for some uh, good clothes that Jocasta can wear because, yeah, this is a bit a little bit stiff for her, a bit um, uncomfortable, I think. And uh, well, they do have some uh, clothes left from when uh, Daphne was a child. So he should be able to find something stowed away here in the wardrobes. So they're going to head upstairs, both of them. And Nina is going to have a, a shower. And then, of course, Nero has to meet his little sister as well. And, well, since his parents are a bit busy, let's have him serve dinner. So let's just go with some uh, mac and cheese, I guess. And well, of course, they already have a bedroom that Jocasta can use. So I think once she has um, gotten some new clothes, she can also take a look at her room. Right, so there actually were more clothes in here than I remembered. <laughs> I tried to figure out which one used to be Daphne's. I don't think it was this one. Might have been this one, actually. Let's go with this one because it's long sleeved and it has uh, very warm looking boots. Nice. And you can also head in here and show her her bedroom. So why don't you take a moment to just, you know, have a little chat? Let's see what they talk about as they get to know each other. I guess Don is telling her about uh, dinner, what delicious food they will eat <laughs> together. And well, when it comes to food, Jocasta hasn't really ever been thinking about it like what she likes. Uh, she's more been happy to get food, <laughs> I think. Um, there has been several instances when she has sort of been the one left out and she has had to eat leftovers. Um, so. Oh, they found a sub subject that they don't agree on. Okay. Well, I guess that Jocasta having a little bit of a disagreement at once with her father, uh, she's not going to want to chat anymore. She's going to sit down here in the corner <laughs> if she can. Apparently that one isn't usable. Let me take out one of these object rotators. 
think that will help. How about that? Oh, the bed is in the way. But if I turn snapping off and shifting both a little bit then. This one can go more closer to the wall. No. Hmm. One would think that the bed wouldn't be in the way, right? What about if I bring it out a little bit? Yeah, now it works. Okay. <laughs> oh well, just gonna sit there for a little bit. And um, Nina became very curious about the object rotator, apparently. <laughs> and Nero burned the food. Amazing. <laughs> but uh, they're gonna have to eat that for dinner anyway. Um, yeah, so I think that actually... Nina is going to head in here as well to chat a bit with your casta and then they're going to head down to have dinner. So I guess she is wondering why she's sitting here alone. Or well, maybe she's just talking about like if she likes her new clothes and if she likes her new room. And I think your casta is more open to talk um, honestly with Nina since they already know each other more. Even though they're not very close. This is a mod by the way. That um, makes the sims uh, gain charisma. When they are chatting with each other. So it's pretty similar to the sims 3. Talking a lot about clothes. <laughs> and of course since. Um, Nina has the day off today. She's not going to host the ballet club. For the kids either. Um, she's going to do that only on days. That she's actually working. So let's have them head downstairs and eat this amazing burnt mac and cheese. And Nero, you can um, clean it up and then sit down with your family. <laughs> That's amazing. They're eating exactly the same way. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, so Nina is thanking Nero for cooking food. I guess... Uh, He's not very proud of the results, so he doesn't really take the compliment well. <laughs> He's uh, already talking about aging up and moving out, I guess. And uh, well, I bet Don gets anxious and changes the su subject at once. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, your cast is sitting quietly so far. Hmm. Okay, so your cast actually wants to read this children's book. So I think she's just going to do her own thing for a bit. And well, I think Dawn is going to sit down next to her. Hmm, how about Nero? He really does need to do his homework. So I'm just going to send him up to do that. And well, Nina uh, really needs it a bit more. So he's going to have... A second helping of this amazing dinner. <laughs> okay, apparently Don is trying to talk to your cast about starting a fight. <laughs> or, well, winning a fight, anyway. But she doesn't seem to be interested in that. She's very immersed in her book. I'm very interested to see if um, something will happen with your as she lives in this house instead, because... So far, she has not been able to figure out what her one true hobby is. She hasn't really had much, um, you know, personal agency and um, the sort of environment to encourage her own likes and dislikes. But I'm sure that things will change now that she is in this household instead. Well, I'm hopeful that that will happen anyway. Let's have her stop reading and let's see if um, she can sit down and chat a bit more with Don. Since she does want to befriend him after all. And he's sitting here so calmly. Because they're talking about school and uh, she has very good grades. I think she, she likes school. Talking more about food. And then I'm sitting down to show her support as well. But she's doing her own thing to not interrupt them. 
<laughs> it looks like they run out of topics to talk about. I think that's pretty typical of Don. He's um, a bit awkward around children, I think. Well, it's getting late and she's pretty tired. So I think that she's just going to retire to her bed, actually. And sleep in her new bedroom for the first time. And well, both uh, Nina and Don want to go on a date. <laughs> it's pretty late to, to do that. But I guess uh, Don would really appreciate, you know, spending some quality time together and just being the two of them. So I think that he's going to just ask her to hang out at home together on a an impromptu date <laughs> like this. And well, of course, Nina has been very critical um, of Cassandra's treatment of Jocasta for a very long time. So I think that she sees this change in their family dynamic as a very positive thing. Actually, I think that she's sort of been impatient with Don for not approaching this subject before this even. Okay, so Nero is still occupied with his homework, so they have some um, space to be alone downstairs. And of course, they're going to start by chatting about everything that's been going on today. And I think that, um, yeah, pretty soon it's going to move on to distracting each other, um, having fun, telling jokes and, yeah, just enjoying their time together. Think about other things than all of the mess that's around them. Still is rolling want for uh, <laughs> falling in love with Jennifer, interestingly enough. Hey, wants to dance. Let's turn on some music then. She also wants to dance. Yeah, actually. I'm really relieved that even though he's losing a lot of um, relationships around him lately, his uh, relationship with Nina is as strong as ever. They can really rely on each other. that we can actually bring this upstairs to the hot tub probably because they want to like massage and kiss and stuff all good things for hot tubs and apparently Nero has uh, gone to bed the homework was too much for him apparently he <laughs> didn't even finish nice way to end the evening on right Apparently, Nina is getting out. Oh, she wants to be angry about the break-in. <laughs> All right. Don't think about that right now, Nina. You have other things to think about. What about you, Don? What are you trying to do now? Oh, he's tired. Mm. Should be able to stay up a little bit longer, Don. What now, Nina? <laughs> No, okay, yeah. I guess this is not working tonight. <laughs> Let's uh, take it down to... Oh, well, we can um, do a normal back rub then, instead of being in the hot tub. Let's just bring this downstairs then to the bed instead. Really stuck talking about food, it seems like, today. <laughs> I guess they're still hungry after the disastrous dinner. Well, let's just have them woohoo. It's not going to be a dream date. Um, but uh, yeah, they got up to great anyway. So I think that's uh, good enough. <laughs> 
And then they can end this and go to sleep. There we go, end the date. <laughs> Very nice. They can go ahead and um, go to sleep. Right. And that was the um, end of um, Thursday for this family and the end of this episode. So, yeah, I'm really stoked that uh, Jocasta is finally <laughs> moved out of the goth house. I think that was about time. And uh, yeah, I really have high hopes for what will happen to her now that she's actually in a household where she's wanted and uh, appreciated. So let's see how this continues. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.